Welcome to the Budget Mom YouTube channel. I'm Kamiko Love from thebudgetmom.com. Today we are doing a real life budget for Jillian. Now this is the first real life budget I've done like this. And I'm gonna say it right now, side note, um, there's gonna be a little bit of tough love with this one here. And I really struggled on whether or not I wanted to share or show this budget. This is all about budgeting when you don't make enough. And so let me go into a little bit of Jillian's history. So she lives in Grand Rapids, Michigan with her husband. She has a full-time job and a part-time job. She currently is a billing and administrative lead at a trucking company and then she drives the airport shuttle um, on the side for shuttle service. So they share and combine finances, but recently Jillian's husband lost his job. And he lost his job um, a couple weeks ago from the time that she sent her this information. Um, she, he hasn't had any income for weeks. So he did apply for working at USPS but he applied for that job on September 8th and they have yet to bring him on and actually give him income. So, so it's almost been almost two months um, since he applied for that and, and he's still not making any income. They still have not brought him on. So he got a side job working with his wife doing the airport shuttle service um, that he makes one to $200 every week. Now, when I first got Jillian's information, when I started working out the numbers, it was very apparent right away we were in the red. And we were in the red by a significant amount. So what do you do any single time there has been a loss of income when it comes to your budget? Whether a spouse loses a job, maybe you have lost a job. So today it's gonna to be a little bit different for a real life budget. I wanna show the process of what it looks like to get down to a bare bones budget using the information Jillian gave me. So it's gonna be different from showing just the budget calendar and the paycheck budget tracker. We're gonna be looking at the bare bones budget and the process that I went through and where we ended up after we cut her expenses. So the first step in the budget by paycheck process is figuring out your why, your motivation, the reason behind you being on your financial journey and wanting to become better with your finances. Now Jillian's is all about building her dream home, becoming debt free and starting a family. Now a little on her backstory. So her and her husband bought their first home. It's a mobile home inside of a mobile home park in 2018. She says it was a nightmare. So they didn't have the $5,000 down payment, so her parents gifted the $5,000 to them for their wedding. Now they couldn't get approved anywhere else because they both had really bad credit, but they desperately wanted to get out of her parents' basement. So we took the first and only place that we were offered. They didn't understand anything about mortgages or how they work, so we just signed without really doing our homework. Now fast forward to today, a couple months, and we realized that we are paying, paying nearly 13% interest because our credit is so bad. Their house journey has been an emotionally and financially exhausting, so we are so ready to put this life behind us and be able to build our dream home, get out of debt, and start a family. So that's a little bit of their backstory. Now, when we look at their income, this is Jillian's income. She, has, she gets paid weekly. $500 a week from her full-time job, and she makes anywhere between $80 to $200 with her side job driving the airport shuttle service. So you can see here, these are her paydays, these are her pay amounts. So what I did is after looking at her income, now keep in mind, remember her husband did pick up a part-time job with her. He makes anywhere between $1 to $200 a week. That is not on this, but I want to mention it. This is their bills. Now I'll explain the pink here in a minute. Their bills are a little bit weird, some of them, because some of them they're paying every Friday, so every week. So they have, and also their rent and, and housing situation is a little bit weird because they have a lot rent, the lot that which their mobile home sits on is 550, and then they're paying mortgage on their actual mobile home, which is 636. So they're paying over $1,000 for their housing. 
They have Spotify, Netflix, Hulu, Disney Plus, Discovery Plus. They have their car insurance, Comcast, Amazon, subscribe and save. Now, her phone bill is paid by her mom, which she then pays her mom back every Friday for her phone bill and then a car repair bill that her mom paid for. They have Apple, they have a puppy care plan. Now, I wasn't quite sure this headstone for father-in-law, I'm, they're paying $100 a month for that. I'm not quite sure what type of plan that is or if they have something set up with their family or what. Um, consumer energy is their utilities. Now, you see two consumer energies. One is paid weekly because they're past due on their utility bill. They're currently paying $86 a week for past due payments on top of the $226 every month for their current payment for their utilities. Their puppy has pills he has to take, which is $100 a month, and then they have Xbox Live. This is their variable expenses. They do groceries, gas, dog food, clothes, gas, food, nails, Scentsy, oil changes, and eyelash extensions for her. Now, she did put a note, these are not all necessary every single month. For example, we have not bought Scentsy in about a month, but I put it on here because it's something we like buying. So she did put a note that this is the Scentsy and some of the things aren't every month, but she did put it in her budget because she hopefully one day wants to be able to spend on those things. Now let's look at their debt. Their debt is what worries me the most. Um, so they're paying, remember, she talked about both of her and her husband's credit scores being very, very low, bad credit scores. So they took out a car loan, a 2012 Chevy Traverse, about $9,300 is what they owe at about 23% interest. Now, if it were me, I would sell the car. I'd get rid of it. Because their minimum payment's only covering interest, they're currently not making any headway on paying off the car itself. They do have a Toyota 4Runner. Um, it's $2,500, 0% interest. I think this might have to do with the car repair. I don't think this is for the car itself, but I'm not 100% sure on that. They have a credit card, a loan, and two more credit cards that they are working on. The next debt that is a little bit scary, uh, worrying is the 4,300 at 21% interest. Now, if it were me, I would see about selling the Chevy. If not, and in the meantime, I would work on priority number one would be the Chevy Traverse. The MCU loan at 21% interest would be my second priority. I would then work on this MCU credit card at 13% interest, or excuse me, the credit one credit card, 15% interest, then the MCU credit card, then the Visa credit card. I like to pay off my debt in priority of the interest rate, highest interest rate I pay off first because it's gonna save you the most money in the long run on the life of your debt. Some people like to pay off using the snowball method, which is paying off the smallest balance first, which would then be the $1,000 credit cards. One of the debts that is not in this is their mortgage. They do, remember, they bought that mobile home and their mortgage isn't on here. We're not quite sure what they own that. I just know it's a high interest rate as well. They do have some savings goals. It looks like they're dog needs ACL surgery, a house down payment, and an emergency fund. Currently, they have nothing saved for these goals. Now, what I wanna talk about very quickly, the first thing that I do when I get a community member's information is I take their income minus their expenses. So when I looked at their income, which is right here, so I took the Two, about the $2,000 a month. So for instance, I looked at November. November is what I looked at. So I took the one, two, three, four. She gets paid four times in the month of November. That's $2,000. She gets paid one, two, three, four, another $400 in the month of November for her side job. So that's $2,400. Then I added in the $100 a week that her husband gets for his side job. So that's $2,800 of income. Now, when I subtracted it from her fixed expenses and her variable spending, we were immediately in the red. So here's what I did. I use what's called a bare bones budget worksheet to start cutting and minimizing my spending. Because one of the things you have to ask yourself is when you're in the red with your budget, 
is it an income problem or is it a spending problem? And one of the ways that you can tell is by simply going through your spending, cutting out any unnecessary spending, are you still in the red? If you're in the green and have what you need and want for your financial goals, then it's a spending problem. But if you literally get yourself to a bare bones budget like this and you are still drastically in the red, it is an income issue at that point. Because that means no matter what you do with your expenses and your spending, you're still coming up short when it comes to your income. So, like I said, I use the bare bones budget worksheet. We're talking about November. So what I did is I wrote down all of her fixed expenses and that includes all of her minimum debt payments as well. So these minimum debt payments here, because don't forget, you want to keep up on your debt payments, especially the minimum payments. So when I did that, all her bills equal 3466. And do you remember how I told you they only make $2,800 a month? So I said, okay, let's cut out and get Jillian down to a bare bones budget and see where we're at and how, how close we are to matching our income to expenses. So everything in orange is what we're going to keep because you have three decisions you can make with your spending and your expenses. You can keep, cut, or lower, okay? So if it's in orange, I kept the expense. If it's in pink, I cut it out completely. And if it's in blue, I know that they can probably lower that bill. So the things I decided to cut from Jillian's, and you can see I was able to cut a lot. We cut out Netflix, Hulu, Disney+, Plus, Apple, Spotify, Xbox Live, Amazon Subscribe and Save, I even cut out her monthly amount that she was paying for a puppy care plan, Discovery Plus, and then temporarily cutting out the $100 a month they're spending on her father-in-law's headstone. Now, because I don't know exactly what that is for, if there is a contract, if they are working on some type of um, pay plan with that, or, or if it's just among the family, but it would be my suggestion if they can to only temporarily cut this expense so they can save themselves $100 a month. Even cutting out, oh, and then Comcast is $165 a month for them. Going to Comcast, switching providers, whatever need be to get that lowered. Even with cutting out all of that, so I was able to cut out $256 from their budget which gives me a new expense total of 32.10. Now remember, I said the least amount that they expect to make every month is 2,800, so we're still in the red. So I investigated further. Here's Jillian's income. Here's her husband's income for the month of November, 2,800. Her expenses, when I cut everything that I could, was 32.10. So if we take her income minus expenses, we're negative 410. However, though, that does not include the variable expenses they need to live, gas, food. So when I went through her variable expenses, I cut out everything in pink. Because when you get to a bare bones budget and you're looking at your spending, you don't wanna just cut and get to a bare bones budget on your fixed expenses, you also wanna look at your variable spending. So remember, a bare bones budget is all about paying only what you need to survive, your necessities. It's a temporary budget. It's what you use in the time of an emergency or a need when you have loss of income, when you lose a job, whatever it may be. So we're cutting out clothes and shoes, eating out, nails, Scentsy. Now they're currently doing 50 to $60 a month for oil changes. I don't know about you, but I only get oil changes on my car once every three months. So they should, if they truly have been saving or spending whatever they're doing with the 50 to $60 every single month, maybe that's a car maintenance type of thing, but we need to cut it out temporarily. And then her eyelash extension fills that she's paying 70 to $90 a month for, we need to cut that out. Remember, bare bones budget is only our necessities. So we're left with groceries, gas, dog food, and then gas for their stove. Bare bones. 
even with cutting down their variable spending, which equals 730, were negative $1,140. So let's talk about how to move forward knowing this information. Okay, so after looking at the bare bones and working through each one of the expenses and spending and deciding cut, keep, or lower, and we got down to what our number is, it's negative, four, uh, negative 1140. We know this is an income issue, right? Now, I know that her husband got hired with USPS on September 8th, but it's been two months and they still have not brought him in. I'd be calling them every single day and after three weeks, two weeks, I would have went out and found another position that I could apply for. We know this is an income problem. Now, Jillian it has a full-time job and she also is working the side job. So it'd be my recommendation that her husband looks for additional income. What does that look like? That could be applying at fast food restaurant for a full-time position. That could be driving for Uber or Uber Eats. I know Ryan's um, boyfriend did that for a short while and they were able to make some, some decent money with that. That means selling what you can around your home that you're no longer using. That could be using other skill sets and maybe doing things on the side as your own employer. There has to be some income brought in here. And it goes beyond just sitting back and waiting for USPS to bring them in, right? And I, and I mentioned, side note, this is tough love. But you have to do what you have to do when you are in the red. You cut down everything that you can. And once you know it's an income problem, you need to start looking for options and opportunities in your life to bring in more income. Yes, you are capable of making more. You are capable of finding a side job or making more income. You just have to be willing to put in that work to do so. And first thing I would immediately apply for Uber Eats or some type of delivery service like that. Because who knows at this point if USPS is even gonna bring them in and if they bring them in, guaranteed it's probably for seasonal work. Here's another opportunity. Right now I know that everyone is short on workers. Everyone is looking for workers right now. It seems like every industry, every place out there is, is short on workers. I know Amazon is currently offering a $3,000 sign-on bonus for applying and getting hired at Amazon. So that could be an option that $3,000 could probably really help them get caught up on some of these bills, especially maybe that past due utility bill that they owe. So looking at opportunities like that, instead of sitting back and waiting for USPS to hand you that position and that income, it's being intentional and it's about taking you personally taking that step to do what you have to do to cover your living expenses, especially when we're talking about just a bare bones budget. You have to take that incentive for yourself. Nothing's gonna be handed or given. So if it were me, after two weeks of USPS not bringing me on and me calling them every day, I would have went out and got found some additional ways to make some extra income, whether that's Uber Eats and driving for half the day or whatever that may be. Because even an additional $400, $800 a month could help here. We're at the point where any amount could help. It means the difference between not paying a necessity bill and paying a necessity bill. Now, currently their food budget, I think is that is we looked at is about $400 a month. I mean, yeah, $400 to $500 a month. You can cut that down even lower. This is in the time where, hey, there, I'm not gonna lie, there was times when I, I had to do this myself. They, there is no shame in this. First, let me say that right now. There's no guilt and shame in being in this position, okay? It's temporary. You work through it and you come out on top. But you gotta do the, take the incentive and put in the work. So I wanna say that right now, there's no shame in being in this position. However, with that being said, I was in this position just six years ago, I had to make the decision to either put food on the table for me and my kid or pay my utility bill and keep my lights on. And sometimes I had to choose. And I'm not gonna lie, there were a lot of days where I was so thankful that his school offered free lunches. 
that was a blessing for me. Um, so what does this look like going forward? How do you budget something like this when you're so, such in the negative, with such a high negative amount? You pay your priorities. So it's taking, looking at those priority necessity bills that I kept and paying the priorities out of those. Okay, you focus on your major priorities, your four walls, keeping the lights on, heat in your home, having a place to live, keeping a roof over your head. Now their transportation can be altered a little bit, right? They could choose to sell a car if they wanted to. Now, I don't know how upside down they are on that car loan with that's at over $9,000, but it needs to be an option that we look at, they discuss as a, married, as a married couple. Does it mean taking public transportation, saving on gas? That category could be altered a little bit. You pay what you can when you get your paychecks, you take care of your four walls, the things that you absolutely need to live and you go from there. And hopefully, the husband is able to bring in a little bit more of side income. And the only reason I say husband is because Jillian already has the full-time job and the part-time job. I don't know how many more hours in her day that she could take to work another job or find another job. So, it's where you come together and you work as a team and you take the incentive to put in the work and to put your foot forward and finding an additional, additional income because you know now that this is an income issue. So anytime you are working with a job loss or a loss of income, don't, fa don't feel shame around your position. You do the work. You get yourself down to a bare bones budget. Is it a spending issue or is it an income issue? And you go from there. But once you know whether it's one of those two things, you're able to take the appropriate action to benefit you the most when it comes to your money. Now, mine was an income issue. I got myself down to a bare bones budget. What did I do? I took my love of photography and I turned it into a side job. I, I shot real estate photography on the side because at that time my son was only one and I had to carry him on my hip because I couldn't afford daycare during the week. I sold things that I no longer needed around my home. I did what I needed to do. And I was very blessed. I knew someone in the real estate industry who, uh, he was a realtor that took his, his chances on me. I had no, no idea about real estate photography, <laughs> but it turned out my, my house pictures turned out okay. And it worked out and I did that for three months until the budget mom happened in my life. So do you have a skill set? that other people could utilize and pay you for. So this is the real life budget. I know this is something that we don't usually talk about, but it's important, it's important. It's a hard conversation, isn't it? It's an uncomfortable conversation. But one of the number one things that I wanted to mention is getting yourself down to a bare bones budget, but also saying it's okay. This is okay, there's no shame around this. So if you found this video helpful, please like it and don't forget to subscribe. Figuring out your motivation, your why. So that, oh, Toby.